Good evening and welcome to this, the fifth edition of the 2009 Literary Lecture Series presented by the Writing Seminars Faculty of the Pre-Medical Educational Program at Weill Cornell Medical College. Some of you look like familiar faces, people I've seen here before throughout the month. It's been interesting, this month we've had five uh, Wednesday evenings because there it turned out that there were five Wednesdays in the month of April. And it seems also significant uh, to remark it is uh, National Poetry Month in the United States of America. And whether it was intentional or not in designing this annual series, April has continued to be not the cruelest month, as T.S. Eliot called it in the wasteland, but perhaps the coolest month in the pre-medical program. But then again, I have my own Biotonato. I'm the coordinator of the first year writing seminars and I want to welcome you, and I'm so glad to have you turn out. I know it's late in the semester for all of us who are in the academic world. We have many things to be doing, and there are other things doing in swinging Doha tonight. But you're in the coolest place, and so that's great. Uh, before I begin uh, to introduce Rodney and his topic for tonight, I want to thank him for having been the coordinator of this series. This is the third year that he has done this, and each year the series has developed momentum. The publicity has been better. We, we see a number of familiar faces returning for the various events throughout the month of April. So that is one facet of uh, Rodney Sharkey's talent. Rodney has been involved in all kinds of things theatrical for a very long time and he certainly understands the importance of adequate publicity, of reaching out to the community, and the way that culture literally rose from person to person interaction. So it's no uh, surprise that tonight he's connecting one dimension especially of William Butler Yeats, the personal and the political. Of course there are many dimensions to the uh, wonderful William Butler Yeats. So to be here tonight is to be making culture. To be here tonight listening to Rodney's lecture is to be sharing in culture. And I like to remind audiences of that fact. Culture isn't something isolated that happens within the pages of a book, although it does happen that way when you read privately. But it's also something very communal, and it has to do with language in this case, and the way language and ideas are shared. I'll quote from something that Rodney said in some of the publicity about uh, his lecture titled Excited, Passionate, Fantastical Imagination, W.B. Yeats and the Personal Political. He starts out by referring to said T.S. Eliot. He referred to William Butler Yeats as, quote, the great time. Uh, in this lecture on Yeats, uh, Dr. Sharkey will consider what it is that makes Yeats's poetry great. In the process, he will draw attention to Yeats' singular imaginative universe and his commitment to Irish nationalism, arguing that in his work, Yeats achieved an ideal balance between artistic self-realization and political necessity. Yeats is, as I'm sure many of you know, the poet's poet of the 20th century. You could even say he also aspired, especially within the context of uh, uh, Irish culture, to be the people's poet. Of course, politics means people. And he also, of course, was and is the magician's poet, for that is another fascinating side of William Butler Yeats. What a career, what a span of interests, and what enduring poetry Yeats wrote. So um, how could anybody uh, take that on in a... Th well, we think Rodney's our man. And I remember saying something similar uh, last year when he uh, had uh, many illuminating uh, insights to offer about James Joyce. And I probably said something similar the year before introducing him to talk about Samuel Beckett. And I think that indicates uh, where Rodney's interests lie in terms of Irish literature itself. He's steeped in the seminal authors of the 20th century Irish literary renaissance. But Rodney does other things as well. He brings his own passionate and intellectual intensity to many different kinds of endeavors. He's been here at Weill Cornell for three years now, 
and he's continued to publish very widely writing on such topics besides Irish literature as modernism, film, and popular culture. Those of you who have seen him in action before, some of you have had him as a teacher, and others of you have attended his lectures previously, will attest to the fact that what he has to say is always fascinating and that his delivery is captivating. So please join me in welcoming Rodney Sharkey. Thank you very much, Peter. It's extraordinary. I was, just, I was saying to Peter just beforehand, um, you have to do publicity, so you write up a blurb of what you, what you think you might do, and then five weeks later, it comes back and bites you. And I look at this and think, what was I thinking? <laughs> Nonetheless, um, as Peter says, it's incredibly difficult to, uh, to begin trying to, to sum up William Butler Yeats, of the three authors I've already spoken about, he's the one whose sort of breadth and reach is probably the most extensive. So I've gone for something small, and I hope it's of interest to you. I discovered the real William Butler Yeats in 1980, um, June 1980. I'd been reading his poetry for about two years prior to that, and it had left me cold. Um, and then in June 1980, he spoke to me which was an extraordinary moment. Um, now, the reason that Yeats's poetry left me cold, uh, well, let me show you. James Joyce. Um, you've got to remember, in 1980, I was, I was 15 years of age. So I was very concerned about image. Keith Richards from the Rolling Stones was cool. David Bowie was cool. Um, James Joyce was, was cool, because James Joyce looked like a pirate. Um, he went to the school I went to, he wrote about the creeping paralysis of Dublin, and he had fled. And I, too, was thinking that I wanted to flee uh, as soon as was possible, as soon as that was mon monetarily possible. So, um, yeah, Joyce had something. And Beckett was arguably one of the coolest-looking people. Yeah. And he, too, had fled Ireland. And he also had this th very fine line in scatological humour, almost worthy of a 15-year-old. So, uh, so Beckett was equally cool, whereas Yeats looked like this. Or at least the extant photograph of Yeats at the time. And also Yeats seemed to have this preoccupation. All the poetry that we were given in school, Yeats was always concerned about. Wait. Oh yeah, sorry. I, in comparison, a further comparison, um, Ireland's current preeminent poet. Shane McGowan. It's not a great photograph. Wait. Better. Yes. Okay. Anyone who would dispute that? Well, we can just go over the lyrics of Thousands are sailing, streams of whiskey are flowing, pair of brown eyes. Some people say Seamus Heaney. I'd say Shane McGowan. Now, Yeats was also preoccupied with old age. Everything in Yeats was about old age. This is a line from Sailing to Byzantium. An aged man is but a paltry thing, a tattered coat upon a stick. And when you're 15 years of age, I'm sitting in class and you're doing that thinking about the birds and the bees every 14 seconds or four minutes or whatever the urban myth was, the, the Yeats was profoundly unsettling. So now let's skip forward a year. Last year. Sorry, let's skip forward to last year. I'm in Paris and stumble across an exhibition of photographs by a photographer called Edward Steichen. And this. And I think Okay, and of course, in the interim, I've come to a profound appreciation of W.B. Yeats and his poetry about ageing and all of those things. And I think this is the Yeats that I know now. This is the, here, this is the, the two photographs of Yeats, the extant photograph of Yeats when I was younger. This one, the sort of grand, Anglo-Irish, very genteel. And whereas here, I noticed in this photograph last year, you see the sort of disheveled genius, the crazy hair, the touch of madness. So I went, when I was putting this lecture together, right, I went looking. This is the photograph that I remember from my youth. And now through the wonders of Google, I found this. <laughs> 